Hi, and welcome to Chase's Corner. Hey guys, it's Chase, and happy Pride! I'm here today to talk about some of my experiences as a member of the LGBT community, and to share my story so that hopefully it can reach out to some of you guys and maybe help you figure something out about yourself. For those of you who don't know, I identify sexuality-wise as asexual and gender-wise as a trans man. Mostly just solidly male, but I do associate myself with the trans umbrella because I think it's a really important part of me and I want to fully embrace that and reach out and inspire other people. I discovered this about myself when I was about 15 years old. I've been to all girls schools all my life and in high school there was a guy a few years above me who was a trans man and when I found out what trans was and like what it meant and that that was something you could be things just started ticking in my brain and it took me a few months to get there but I finally realized wow that's me. I first came out to my mum and I could not have been luckier she was incredibly supportive immediately asked me like okay what's step one how do we help you with this and it was just absolutely amazing. She told the rest of my family for me because I was too nervous to come out by myself. It was sort of happily over after from there, luckily. You had the few comments at school, people who didn't get it as much, but nowadays I think it's much more of a known thing and people are a lot more educated on trans issues, like more so than they were when I was a teenager. And it's really great to see the community moving forward with such speed in this way. Something that I think is important to remember about members of the trans community whether they be trans men, trans women, or non-binary, is that not everyone is as open as each other, and you really have to respect each other's privacy, and this goes out to everyone. If you know that someone is trans, if you think that someone is trans, but they haven't come out to you, don't, don't talk about it to them, don't talk about it to other people, because that's just not fair, and you're not respecting their privacy. If they are trans, and they want to come out to you, they will. Just let them do that on their own time. And if you know someone is trans, but they don't talk about it publicly, and they are a private person, again, it's not your story to tell. You don't get to speak for them. There's nothing more disheartening than putting trust in someone and coming out to them, and then knowing that they've gone and told other people that you're not comfortable with knowing that information and it's just very important to remember to respect each other's privacy and as well to respect that not every trans person is going to want to go through the same medical treatments or any treatments whatsoever. Everyone's experience of transness is completely different and I know people who have had like wildly different experiences, whether it's just how they express their gender or how they've gone through medically. It's different for everyone and you need to respect that no matter who you are or how you identify. It's each to their own and you just have to know when it's your place to speak. It's your place to speak about yourself and it's not your place to speak about other people. I remember at a convention once, someone I was dressed as Brian from Dream Daddy, and someone complimented my cosplay, someone I didn't know, called me over, complimented my cosplay, and then immediately asked me if I was trans. And I was sort of struck for a second, not really knowing how to respond, and after a pause I said, yeah, and then they looked at me and went, hmm, I can tell. Don't! Don't do that! All that shows is that you you are showing off that you can tell if someone is trans and that's not fair to anyone it's so rude it's so incredibly rude and disrespectful and just don't if you see someone and you think hmm maybe they're trans like if you're trans or if you're cis whatever just just don't that's my advice don't it's rude respect people for me, my trans identity is quite binary male. There are a lot of different fluidities and things that can fall under the trans umbrella, whether you're a trans girl or non-binary, or you feel like neither or something in between everything. But for me, it's just binary male, but kind of fabulous. And this was something that I tried to push away for a really long time. When I was in high school, I felt like to be taken seriously, I had to present myself as the sort of not stereotypical male, but that I would have to dress in like baggy clothes and carry myself in a way where 
oh, I don't really care, I'm just a guy. And it wasn't really me, and I never truly sort of felt happy in myself when I was kind of presenting that way. And then as I got older and my medical transition was moving forwards and like I started testosterone and I had my top surgery, I felt more and more comfortable in my body and myself to express who I really was. And it was actually, I was watching a show called uh, Orphan Black, which some of you may have seen. There's a character in it called Felix, who is a gay man, who in some episodes was quite often wearing like really nice makeup, like this really nice blue eyeshadow. And I thought, damn, I want some of that. And it was actually when I was on a school trip in New York that I bought my first little bit of makeup for me. No one knew me there, so I pretended that it was for my sister back home and that she liked blue. And I got a really nice blue eyeshadow. And then I started experimenting with makeup from there. And my gender expression sort of grew from just binary male to a more like liberated masculine. And that's sort of how I became the person I am today because I stopped caring about ideas of toxic masculinity and what a man should be and focused instead of the man that I wanted to be. And I've never really looked back from then. I think it's silly how there's this double standard that if a cisgendered man wears makeup, then it's like so groundbreaking and so fabulous and awesome. But if a trans man wears makeup, then how is he supposed to be taken seriously as a man? <laughs> if a cis guy can wear makeup, a trans guy can wear makeup and be just as much of a man. Like, I am so confident in my masculinity that if I wanted to wear a dress and like a full face of makeup and still go out and say, hey, I'm a guy, and I'd be fine with that. I don't necessarily want to, but sometimes I like to make myself look pretty when I want to go out with my friends and I'm still as valid as anyone else. In fact, one of my favorite stories of being a guy in makeup I was uh, in like drag cosplay at a friend's birthday party and we were out in London and I went to the men's room, full sit, face of makeup, ladies clothes, big red wig. I was washing my hands and this guy comes in and he looks at me and he looks back at the door and he looks at me and in the deepest voice I could manage I just went, I'm the weird one mate, don't you worry. And he just nodded and came on in. <laughs> Speaking of drag, and as far as advocates of the LGBT community go, one of my favourite sort of icons is Sasha Velour, the winner of season 9 of RuPaul's Drag Race. I've been to a fair few of her shows, I even have a little tattoo in her handwriting that makes me very happy. There's something about her that I can't quite put my finger on, but as a non-binary drag queen who very happily and artistically represents her community. Going to her shows is the most welcome and loved I have ever felt as a queer person. I know that I am welcome and loved in my everyday life, but specifically in my transness and in my asexuality, I feel so at home when I see her. And I think it's wonderful that we have these sorts of people out there. And I'm sure that there are other queer people who have that person for them. And that's amazing that we have have these icons nowadays who are readily available on TV because back when I was still even when I was in high school I didn't have that or I didn't know about that sort of thing I didn't even know what trans was until someone turned up at my school and was like hey I'm trans and now it's everywhere and that's wonderful that people can just have access to all of this information and media that can help them figure out who they really are and who they want to and are meant to be and it's just so inspiring and wonderful that we can celebrate this in this month of pride no matter who you are or what you identify as, you should be proud of who you are. There's this constant sort of talk and iffiness about the place of the asexual community within Pride. And as someone who identifies as trans, I know that I'm welcome at Pride, but as someone who identifies as ace, I always feel this kind of friction as to like whether my sexuality is allowed to be present or not. And whilst I completely acknowledge that there hasn't been that sort of oppression that there has been with other communities, I still think it it is a community that deserves a place to feel safe. It just has to acknowledge that there are other people there. Like, you can't get offended at people kissing at Pride because that's the space for gay people and lesbians and bi people to celebrate themselves. Everyone just needs to 
celebrate themselves in different ways. For me, my asexuality is something that my mum actually pointed out to me. She had this magazine where she was reading an interview about a model who essentially identified as non-binary, but that wasn't her point. There was a quote from it that said, some people want me to be their prince, some people want me to be their princess, but I don't feel like being either for anyone. And she just pointed that to me and went, this is you. And I just sort of went, huh? She was like, I just don't feel like you're really interested in anyone or anything. And that never occurred to me before and it just kind of stuck. And then when I learned what asexuality was, I went, oh damn, mum was right. <laughs> That is me! And I know that there's quite a few ideas of people who are trans identifying as asexual and then once they've finished uh, medically transitioning and they're more comfortable with their bodies, they sort of don't ID as that anymore. Or that people have grown out of it when they've found a partner who sort of understands them a bit more. But for me, I've never thought any other way. Like, I've always ID'd as asexual and it's just not really something that I think is going to change, and I'm okay with that. And if that's how you feel, then I think you should be okay with that too. And if you do ID as asexual now, and you don't in a year's time, that's okay. It's not any less valid. People are growing and changing constantly, and it's nothing to be ashamed of. But for now, just know that you're valid exactly as you are, and you can be happy in yourself. So as I said before, I came out and sort of started my journey when I was about 15 years old and now eight years later at 22 I've finished all of the medical stuff that I wanted to have done and um, I still have to have like tea shots every three months or so but everything else is behind me and I'm very lucky to have had things relatively easy people who live in the UK will know that the NHS is not necessarily the smoothest of rides <laughs> but I was generally quite lucky with waiting lists and all of those sorts of things. What I would say to anyone who is either questioning their gender identity or you already have an inkling that you think you know, you're, you're a trans man, you're a trans woman, you're non-binary, just make sure that if you're going to come out, it's only to the people that you really, really trust. And if you're scared to do so, whether it's because of your current living situation or how things are at school, anything like that, I know it sucks, but it's probably better to wait until you can remove yourself from that kind of toxic and negative energy to really flourish into the person that you want to and are supposed to be. What a lot of people in the LGBT community will learn over time is that you are always coming out because new people you meet won't know these things about you necessarily. And it eventually comes up in conversation, like if you're more open about it usually. Like for a very long time I used to, I used to hide the fact that I was trans just to be taken seriously as a man. I thought that was the only way that I could move forward and I just wouldn't talk about it unless it was with people who already knew me from before and like knew that I was trans. Uh, but this was around the time of my top surgery and I had been posting online about the fact that I was going for a surgery because I wanted people to know that I was going to be okay. But quite a lot of people who I'd made friends with recently were sending me these really worried messages of like, oh my god, I hope it's not anything major and like, I hope you're gonna be all right. I didn't know how to respond to them because like making something up felt like lying and I, I didn't want to lie and I wanted to tell them to the truth, but I felt like almost ashamed in a way. And then I watched some trans YouTubers who were just kind of, you know, celebrating who they are and celebrating their transition. And I sort of thought to myself, like, huh, I, I can just do that. That doesn't make me any less of a man if I celebrate the fact that I'm trans. And so I re-came out to everyone just to say like, this is who I am and this is why I've had this operation and like, I'm fine, I'm good. If you're cool with that, stick around. And if you're not, I don't wanna know you. Let's move forward from here. And I think it's important to remember that not everyone who is trans wants to associate themselves as trans. Like some people will not hide it, but they won't talk about it as much. And that's fine. That's perfectly respectable. Like you do what makes you happy and what makes you comfortable. But if you want to celebrate it, but you feel like you can't, as long as you're in a safe situation to do so, go for it. That's the way to be truest to yourself. And you'll feel so much happier for just being you. There doesn't have to be such negativity in trans stories. In a lot of the media, our stories are told as 
tragedies that can't have happy endings, and it's the same with gay people and lesbians and bisexuals, but it, it's just not true. There are plenty of trans people, myself included, who have had amazing luck and support from people who love and care about them, and people are gonna love you and care about you for exactly who you are, like, the way that you are, and it will get better at the end of the day. Sometimes you just have to get through that rough patch, and I know it's not the best, but you're gonna thank yourself for it in the end. And just know that there are gonna be so many people who support you and want to know the real and true you, and I support you as well. So yeah, those are some of my experiences as a trans man and as an asexual individual. If you'd like to ask me any questions or you want some more information about my experiences, feel free to hit me up on my personal Twitter and Tumblr, links will be below. But until then, I'm Chase, we are Nyx Rising Industries, and we love you so much. Bye!